What's up, everyone? It's time to talk about the Havoc and Hollister. Monday's here, man. It was an awesome weekend of riding that, I tell ya. We're going to be talking about the Havoc and Hollister. Everybody in the biker scene knows about Hollister and how it really set off what the image of the biker was really about. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video over on YouTube. Welcome to the platform over on Spotify and iHeartRadio. This segment, you're going to want to come over over to the YouTube channel, check it out, because we're going to be having a lot of pictures, and I'll give you the best description I can on the radio, right after this show, China Doll is in the house, I'm going to cover the Hollister event from a media standpoint, And one of the reasons why I want to do this is because ever since Hollister, the media has portrayed bikers as out of control, freaking partiers, rape, pillage, all that kind of stuff. And it's very interesting how they continue to push that narrative. Now, there was all kinds of sensational headlines back in the day that really scared the public. Wait till you see it. I actually found an article from 1947, the day after all this ended. It was funny. There was a lot of flying saucer talk in there, too. I was like, man, they were really needing something to friggin' talk about in 1947. Now, this was two years after the war. Remember that. Service members were returning from World War II. They wanted to let loose. And boy, did they let loose. The problem with some of the titles that the media gave Hollister was totally inaccurate. We know about the staged photo. You'll see that one. But also, a good thing out of this, you got a lot of freaking legendary clubs that are still here today that were there. You have the Goose, you had Top Hatters there, you had freaking uh, Booze Fighters there, Rebel 13 was there, Uh, a lot of freaking good stuff that popped out of it that really set the tone for the culture on the biker side of thing, even though the media tried to play it like, oh my God, it was the end of the freaking world, man. These guys were crazy back then. And I guess they're the ones who uh, taught uh, these uh, morons in the media how to keep on getting views and stuff. Because let's face it, bikers in American culture are like the legendary outlaws of the Wild West. And that's how... The media portrays it. There's a lot of people that are jealous of the lifestyle that we live. We call them citizens. They are infatuated with this lifestyle. That's evident in all the movies, all the TV series that comes out on bikers. You know, the legendary Wild One. Yeah, the wild one with Marlon Brando, Lee Marvin was uh it was a cool movie, you know, but it actually doesn't portray the events of Hollister all that well. Now you gotta remember back in the day, it was a different culture, a different way of thinking. They were very, very conservative back then. Anything outside that norm was considered, to them, out of the ordinary. 
Now, the rally that happened in Hollister was kind of mute compared to what goes on today, uh, especially in the 70s and 80s. I kind of call it evolution. You know, we like partying. Back then, it was a decent party. Now, most of the arrests that took place we're misdemeanor stuff. Drunkenness. Public drunkenness. I like that one. And little fist fights here and there. Other than that, they were racing down Main Street. It wasn't like what you would see at a rally today uh, where they paint over the nipples. They have those cool artworks because, you know, Daytona and Sturges, they want to ticket you for showing your boobies. And that's one thing I never understood. With today's climate, why ain't women going to, like, sue and stuff for discrimination because they can't show their boobies when, uh, you know, men can? I love seeing boobies. So, women, please, go challenge this stuff in court, will ya? I say if you want equality, then go fight for it. Show the boobies. No more bans on boobies. No more tickets on boobies. That's ridiculous if you ask me. But that's what happens when you get corporations involved in a motorcycle rally. Back then, in Hollister's time, they didn't have sponsors for these rallies, man. Uh, the AMA threw them. Uh, it's through the Gypsy Tour and stuff like that. Uh, they're still going on today. They're good rides. Everybody gets together. It's just not the same uh, biker, if you will, that attends these uh, runs anymore. Mostly, it's AMA members, and you don't have to be an AMA member, by the way. I'm just saying, it's a different species, okay? Let's just uh, say rub uh, type of deals. But hey, you know, some runs might be good and some might not bad. Uh, another thing I wanted to address before Hollister. The reasons why I put the actual news up on the screen is so you have sources to go do your own research. Like I said in a couple other segments, I only touch on stuff. I give you something to think about for you to go do your own research. Because you're not going to find everything from radio guys like myself or creators on YouTube. You're not going to find that. You got to go do your own research if you want to know the history of motorcycling. It's just like I always say, you know, there's all these people talking about MCs and what you should do, what you shouldn't do. You want to know that information, go out yourself and talk to the people. You're not going to get all that crap on the internet. You're just not gonna. You got to go up to an actual MC member to learn about it. Just like what I put here, go to these sources and read through it. There's a lot of trying to distinguish between, especially when this comes to the news, especially nowadays. You gotta read between the lines with a lot of these sources because they put their own spin on things. Even back then, they did it. You know, there was a lot of fake news back then. But again, it was because of their conservative values and stuff. So, this one is very interesting, man. I seen this, I was like, hell, no way. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the actual... And the San Francisco Chronicle is one of the major newspapers at that time that pushed a narrative that eventually was picked up by every news agency nationwide. And that's why the legend of Hollister 
spread like it did. That is why a lot of these historians or those that look at uh, the biker lifestyle from a historical standpoint, they start out the beginning of the outlaw biker at Hollister. Here we go. This is July 7th, 1947. And by the way, did you know California led the U.S. in, uh, you know, traffic deaths with 494. Uh, wow, that's a lot. And that was over the holiday, they're saying. Man, that's a lot of freaking car wrecks. But again, them cars were like freaking tanks back then, one hitting the other. And then, you know, there's a lot of talk about flying discs and stuff. But I don't know if you can see it. Let me try to uh, pump it up a little bit. Uh, one of the headlines for Hollister was the 40 hours that shook Hollister. Charge of the Motorcycle Brigade ends. Very interesting stuff, and I, you know what, I tried, oh, there you go, Flying Saucers uh, Mystery def Deepens, you know, just ask now that they got that report coming out, uh, yeah, everybody's been saying there's these things out there, but, uh, hold on, let me, uh, the get, the, continue in the Middle East. Chances are your I don't want to hear about the Middle East, anyway, sorry about that, I hate when them damn things start up on their own. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. And then there was... Come on, where'd it go? Uh, freaking big one. And then anyway, it gives that picture of, you know, the fake stuff like there. Oh, there it is. More on Hollister's bad time. Uh, 2,000 gypsy cyclists, they called them. Chug out of town and the native sigh never again. It has the picture of that was uh, shot by Time magazine that was fake. It was staged. Actually, the guy behind uh, him on that bike said it was staged. And then it shows pictures of everybody laying on the ground, sleeping and stuff like that. But it was just interesting the headlines that they put out and it's kind of like the headlines that, that they do today where it's all sensationalism sensationalism draws in the people and another reason is because the citizens look to bikers and say, man, I wish I can live life like that. I wish that I can be free like that and do what I want. That's why a lot of bu people think bikers are cool. Because they get to live life on their own terms. That's the reason why people are drawn. It's just like little kids. You know, they see a biker... They're waving at you, getting all excited and stuff to see you on a motorcycle. No, And then they go around riding their little bicycles, acting like they're on a motorcycle. It, that is the impression that you put on them. And then hopefully one day they grow up to be a biker too. So that's how society looks at us, wishing they could do something like that. And their appetite for any and all information that the news puts out about bikers is a success. The TV series, those were a huge success. They ran numbers. Some of them uh, took freaking first place in their uh, time slot. Stations you would have never heard of before are made popular by that show because it involves either one, a motorcycle club, or two, a biker of some sorts. While one, 
with Lee Marvin and Marlon Brando was a huge example. That movie was made decades ago, and it's still a popular one among bikers. And I can, you know, venture to say the general public. That's why over the past year, I've been pissed off because... Papers and news agencies were covering us like we were POSs, man. They were covering us like we were piece of shits. Because we decided that we wanted the freedom, since we're Americans, by the way, to choose to go to a motorcycle rally. The first one up was Sturges, which has a very interesting story itself, And they were going around saying it was a super spreader event. Uh, They were bashing us every time a rally was going to occur and people were going to go and enjoy themselves at these rallies. Out of the Sturges one, there was 450,000 or something people that showed up. Only 395 cases of COVID came out of that event. But since it had a deal with bikers, they knew something like that would be pushed into the mainstream and get them some views, get them some subscriptions, stuff like that. That's the only reason why they do it, because it sells. Uh... Let's go to the Chronicle itself, and this is, uh, it was updated... March 2nd of 2016. Now remember, they were the ones back in 47 that actually spread this stuff nationwide. It's just like a freaking uh, news uh, agency. Anyway, these biker photos define the boozy, bloody Hollister riots. One thing that stays consistent is the newspaper that reported on this at the time with all their hype is still pushing all their BS till this day. Uh, Let's go over some of the pictures and then uh, we'll go over to what some of the stuff they say. Uh, Again, if you're on the podcast uh, stations, you got to come over here. You to take a look at these photos. They're pretty cool. Uh, I find it funny, man, with the cops back then. Not only was their uniforms funny, uh, but they were carrying batons everywhere they went. That was their go-to. And at first, you know, this first picture is just showing like a... A main street, something like you would see today at a rally. Except with all the cops wouldn't be standing in the middle of the damn road. And then, of course, the fashion back then with the slick back greasy hair, uh, the rolled up pants uh, uh, bottoms, and leather boots and all that type of stuff. Uh, But the cops are just sitting there, just chilling. Everybody's chilling. Now, there is one of the famous pictures with the guy being hauled off by uh, two cops. Nice little boots there, coppers. Anyway, he's got him in the freaking uh, arm bar, it looks like. Uh, He looks freaking drunker than drunk, man. (laughs) But hey, uh, then you got this old guy, man. It looks like he needed a wheelchair. I don't know why the hell he is freaking working as a cop. But that's one of the pictures that came out. And then, you know, they were carrying tear gas guns and stuff like that. And this is a nighttime photo. And they're just sitting there chilling, man. Where's the freaking riots? Like this freaking Chronicle reported back in 1947. Uh... There it is. There's an update look at uh, that one newspaper ad, or not the ad, but the actual story, uh, the 40 hours that shook Hollister, uh, and that was uh, written by uh, C.J. Doherty Jr. He's probably dead by now. Uh, let's just read a couple lines from this. July 6th, the diminishing roar and crackle of uh, an estimated 2,000 departing motorcycles ended the worst in the Hollister 
Alistair's history. Man, they are really freaking starving for some kind of news back then. Uh, 50 persons were jailed during the ruckus, and as many more were injured several uh, seriously, more than $2,000 in fines. That's not a lot of fines back then. Well, yeah, because the money. Uh, but uh, jail sentences, uh, if we jailed everyone who deserved it, we'd have heart, uh, herded them in by the hundred, says the cops back then. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Uh, and there's the nighttime picture. Don't look like any damn riot to me, man. There's the Hollister Drugstore. Again, this is on Main Street and stuff like that. There's actually a lot of townspeople that were watching this that were at the event, too. I bet them uh, businesses right there made a ton of money. How much you guys want to bet? I bet they made a ton of money. Uh, just like they do nowadays, but they, ha they ha hate bikers, don't they? Let's see here. There's the famous picture couple sleeping on the grass man uh goes all the way back then look at that oil freaking uh spot there <laughs> that's why you had to carry wrenches back then man uh anyway uh that's what we still do to this well some of us do a lot of uh people they stay at motels and shit like that uh but those are some of the famous pictures that the chronicle put out uh Let's see here. Uh, the shots of Eddie Davenport looking intoxicated on his motorcycle and surrounded by beer bottles during riots in the San Benito County town are some of the most requested photos in their archive. One would appear in the Chronicle and one in Life magazine. Uh, uh, yeah, that was shot. That was staged. That was staged big time. Uh, and then it goes into the AMA uh, Gypsy Tour in Hollister. The event was popular in the 1930s, but uh, the First World War, like anything else, ended that type of stuff. Uh, I guess the gathering was supposed to include a three-day program of social activities, racing and hill climbing. But organizers were unprepared for the 4,000 people that showed up. Well, of course, it's after World War II. Everybody's got cabin fever, man, uh, that were in the towns. And then you had our war, uh, returning war heroes coming back. They wanted to party, man. And you know what? We're known for a little party and a little bit. Uh, they started taking over the town on the evening of July 3rd, uh, then the 4th of July stuff. And the Chronicle headline on July 6th, yes, this is the newspaper and the title of this video and uh, segment, Havoc in Hollister. Yes, the San Francisco damn Chronicle, man. They are the ones that started everything man everything back in the day uh it's just kind of funny and i find it virtually freaking amazing that nothing has really changed as far as how the media covers us you know, it's at some point you get tired of all the lies and the BS, uh, the media coverage is striking. They compared it to like a labor, you know how labor unions, they kind of get a little out of control sometimes, you know, uh, our favorite is our Teamsters, but that's how they equated what happened at that rally back then. And you know what? I actually see a couple things on Wikipedia about the media coverage. Again, it can, it was a their claim in in the Wikipedia. Take it as you will. Uh, that it it was a small riot. However, the articles that were written about the riot may have greatly ex uh, exaggerated and sensationalized the actual event. You think so? 
it wasn't that big, man. Uh, it's just, you know what? It's probably tame, like I said, compared to some today's rallies, man. Uh, let's go to that photo taken by uh, Barney Peterson. Uh, that was the San Francisco uh, Chronicle. Uh, the drunken man sitting atop the thing holding a bear and all that stuff. He was later identified as Eddie Davenport. He was a Tulare Riders Motorcycle Club. Uh, the reliability of the striking photo has been debated with sources suggesting the scene was overtly staged, and it was. It was overtly staged. Uh and the guy that was in the back said he saw uh, two guys scraping all these bottles together that had been laying on the street. They positioned a motorcycle in the middle of it, and the guy was drinking and stuff like that. Uh, the consequences that they said, uh, let's see here, this started, uh, the nation started the fear motorcycle hoodlums. Uh, potential uh, rampages and stuff like that. And I guess with that kind of coverage and that type of time air or culture back then would scare people because they're like, oh my God, you know, these are the people that went to church on Sundays. Uh, it was a very different time. Sometimes I say, you know what? I wish I lived back in that time compared to this time because it was a lot more easier back then, a lot more calmer and peaceful. We didn't have all this BS. Besides, man, 1947, they had flying saucers and stuff like No, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyway... I just wanted to cover Hollister from a media standpoint because there's so many different angles that you can look at this one event that really defined what is the outlaw biker now. And guess what? It was the media that defined everything. Just like it is today where they defined a storyline, it was defined back then. But now... As you learn more about it, how it was staged, and there was only like 50 people or something like that arrested out of 4,000, and it was all minor infractions and traffic stuff. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't a riot. It wasn't any of that stuff. Uh, you're just getting what they pushed. But it must have been a hell of a time back then at that party, man. Uh, you know what? If you ever attended Hollister that weekend, if you're one of the older cats, uh, yeah, give us a call, man. Because, you know, first-hand accounts would be very awesome for a story like this. Uh, but sadly, I know a lot of the guys probably have passed away from them but motorcycle clubs like the legendary booze fighters which we're going to cover a little bit about them uh on tomorrow's segment uh Wino willie came out of that uh a lot of freaking interesting people that really set the tone cycle clubs as well man uh they really set the tone of things uh, it's just you wish you were back then anyway uh don't forget, hit the subscribe and like button over on YouTube. We're going to be going to the second half of the show. We usually go to about 9.30. If you don't uh, go there right for the live show, you can hear the replays over on the Hollywood and China Doll uh, show podcast. That's what the second part is, is that show. This one can be heard on Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem on all iHeartRadio, Spotify, and stuff like that. So, I'll see you guys over. Hopefully you liked the video. Let me know your comments in the comment section about how the media played all this, how they overhyped everything. And if you think that if there wasn't coverage like there was, would the image of a biker be different today? See you later.